for a most fascinating conversation. It's been riveting actually to hear all of you, your experiences, and especially the pitches. I think it's 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 been a really fun evening for me as of now, and rest after the time when you hear our conversation. So I'm Sonia. I practice corporate law. I advise startups. I write books, and I help people write books. On stage with me, I have Dr. Avik Sarkar, who, as we know, is a subject matter expert. So I've got notes on my phone. Please don't think that I'm like <laughs> browsing my phone. So Dr. Avik Sarkar is a subject matter expert in data science, analytics, artificial intelligence, and public policy. He teaches at various international level institutes, including the prestigious Indian School of Business. Now, Dr. Avik and I have been working together for a few years, and from him, I've learned a bit about data science. Now, I'm not, I don't have a tech background, I'm a lawyer, but uh, from him, I've worked on a few projects with him on data science, and we've explored the subject, and uh, after a numerous conversations with him, I've gathered a little bit about what data science means. And, you know, I'm not a fan of big words. Even though I'm a lawyer, I don't like jargon. I only like simple concepts. And I like those concepts to be uh, spoken about in simple words. So we'll try to keep this conversation interactive and fun for you so that we all take away something of value from here when we leave. So data science, to my mind, is just studying massive amount of data to find out meaningful insights. That's what data science is. And this, this activity of you know, gathering these inputs is so important because it helps us in making decisions in businesses. Right from a small, young business, what sort of decisions they need to make till the top level decisions, like the policy making processes that happen at international and national levels between governments. So data science is so important for that these days. And with that background, today we are going to talk about the role of data science in startup ecosystem. So uh, tell us, Dr. Ravik, my first question is, how does data science lead to better decision making? And why should startups in India be interested in data science at all? So, so thanks, uh, thanks, Sonia. And thanks, Anuradha, for that kind introduction. Uh, let me first congratulate Anpi for the book. Maybe another round of applause from everyone because that's a very commendable effort from our end. Um, I have known Sahil uh, and her family for a long time, even before uh, the Punjab Angels Network was there. And it's really nice to see her uh, write this book on her own and I, I also hear she is writing uh, five more. I think that's really commendable at her age uh, at this time. And so, uh, I think from the introduction, we also missed out the fact, I think it was mentioned that um, Sonia is also a story writer. So I think that plays a very important role because as she has been talking about my, uh, my art and my uh, work, I think I should also tell a bit more uh, about her. Um, the fact is that uh, startups or enterprises, whatever you are, you have to communicate to the world. You might be building certain products. Like say we, um, we saw in the last um, panel what, what our speakers were talking about. Uh, the fact that you have a product, you want to present it in India, it's a different narrative of branding, or it's a, you, you present it outside India, where you have a complete different audience, you have to brand it in a different manner. Uh, the other gentleman who talks about uh, their uh, employees as the heroes and, and their ambassadors. And I think these are all, all stories that we, we hear on various things. And these stories are, um, are very important when we communicate what we are doing to the outside world. And, and the, what, the way um, I also work with Sonia has been more from the perspective that I work with data a lot. And often data is perceived as something that is very boring and very uh, very technical in nature. So you have to make it accessible uh, to the world. She, she helps me in many of our projects in bridging the gap about what people can understand 
and, and what maybe uh, the technical folks can understand. So I think with that, uh, Sonia, if you allow me, uh, so uh, maybe I will take a quick raise of hands about who all have used any data science or data analytics in their organization. It can be a startup, it can be uh, a small enterprise or a medium enterprise. So do you, have you used that any time in the past? Maybe just raise your hand. Maybe you would like to share because you can then uh, also learn from what you are doing about what you think, uh, what are the type of things that you have done in data science. So if you can give the mic to, to some of them, we'd like to take the share quickly from you. Hello everybody, I was not prepared for this, but then I'll just share a very small thing. So data, of course, we are working on some new products uh, which are more on the data, but I'll just share a very, very small uh, uh, thing. So I was uh, working in, uh, you know, I was a sales guy in the uh, you know, products for textile industry majorly. So I came to know, you know, what products they make, and when, uh, you know, I got the opportunity from one of my buyers in Iran, who was my agent, so I could immediately gauge, you know, I'm just giving a very raw example, but yes. then, you know, that is how data works. So I could, he asked me for some, uh, you know, uh, yarns, particularly from India. So I could immediately gauge what Vartaman or Vinson or Sporky or anybody is making. So immediately I could gauge that data, use that data and started exporting within no time almost. Secondly, you know, I got the opportunity to work with, you know, textile machines. And uh, I had to, you know, uh, make a part uh, and sell it to the textile industry. So I could immediately, because of my old experience, I could know, you know, which machines are working in which company. I could make the part and immediately start selling it. So that is the power of data. Good. So, Any, so anyone else, uh, well, maybe, maybe yeah. you want to add on to something? That's a very good example. So I will, um, I'll go across maybe a few of you. Well, uh, we make orthopedic appliances. We sell across three lakh like chemists in India through about 1,500 uh, distributors, right? So we have about 300 products. And now, uh, so we get a lot of data, what product sells where, for what reason, what product sells, right? So uh, this is a very uh, unorganized data that we get from various chemists. And then we want to analyze so as to predict what would sell the next one, right? That's that's what we do predictive analysis for how you know the season, how the macroeconomics, how the product, how the competition would affect our sales. So in this manner, you know, so we are able to predict the sales for the next one. Depending upon that, we produce and then uh, stock it in our uh, warehouses all across the country. So this is a one set of uh, data that we generate and that we get a lot of. Uh, insights as you say and then based on that we take our action plan. This is one but this is how we maybe analyze hundreds and hundreds of things in our company. Yes, so I think these are, these are very uh, very good examples. Well, the reason I wanted to also get your views uh, because often we don't use the term say data science or data analytics particularly but we tend to use this in while we are doing your business. I think that becomes very important. This is a very common tool that you have used, like as, as Sir just mentioned, you are selling your product in multiple places. You want to understand where, what sort of products demands are coming. I think understanding that is, how can you do that? Otherwise, if you have to send for the next month, how the amount of stock and the type of product, either you do it based on some ad hoc understanding that you have, or you do it based on some structured logic and that data science or data analytics help you in understanding that logic. I think it's very interesting the way he, he explained that. And um, uh, recently we have uh, just completed a study that we are doing uh, with the Punjab government. So they uh, distribute medicines across all the hospitals and, and Ahmadmi clinics across the whole state of Punjab, which is a very uh, big um, uh, flagship program, the Ahmadmi clinic of, uh, of the current CM. So the Ahmadmi clinics often have a lot of rush of patients coming in. 
So they have to stop the right amount of medicine in these Ramadmi clinics. Now there are 843 Ramadmi clinics across Punjab. What is the right amount to be stocked there? So we just finished a project. It was like given to the Punjab government, uh, exactly solving the type of problem that sir was talking about. Which Ahmadmi clinic should store what amount of medicine in which season and week and month? So, so data science help you in planning for the future. It is one of the things that you will see. If you have to plan for the future, either a ad hoc decision lo. Or if you take the decision based on some logic, based on some path, then data science is the tool that will help you do that. So that's a very simple way if you have to take data science from the understanding, either take a decision, Bhagavan Varasalyo, there is no harm in that also, as you have seen. Or if you have to do it based on some logic, based on some trend, then this is where data science can help you. Right, that's that's very well explained, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, so I'm interested in knowing because this is like this place is all about startups and that's that's our main focus here. So why should startups be interested in data science? And you know, like for example, like I feel like everybody is already ready with a product or service that they want to offer to the world, right? And if you have an existing product or service, how can you imbibe data science? Yeah, so that's a very good question, Sonia. So I think you can look at it from two ways. Like either data science or data can be a part of your product offering. Like say what is happening in say Google search. What what search will come on the top is coming through an algorithm here. Yeah. So for them, the data science is their main product offering. So and also we saw the example of this retail platform. I forget the, the name, that was the very second presentation that was there. So they are providing a platform based on data science at their back end that will help you to optimize your business, optimize your supply chain and make a, it very uh, good, the functioning that, that, is, that we are looking at. So either data science can be a part of your product or service offering. That's the one way to look into it. Other way is to look into it is that you can look into any business. You can be a small business or a startup or a medium business or a large business. And this is like a thumb rule you can consider on this session. Look into your business into three broad aspects. One is the customer aspect. One is your operations aspect. And third is the financial aspect. Broad three companies that uh, three aspects that you can look into for your organization and see in these three aspects, you can apply data science in each of these three areas and try and optimize that area, reduce the cost, reduce the process that is there. Say if you are talking about, say, uh, you are talking about the stocking and deciding how much um, product to stock for the next season. Say you do it a few seasons and you see that you are not doing the optimal stocking. So you can take some time. But if you want to do that optimal stocking, use data science and that will help you come up to your optimum solutions in a very much shorter time period. Again, maybe you want to do your financial planning for the next few years. Again, data science can help you from that perspective. We are talking about uh, human resource. Human resource is a very human oriented thing as, uh, as many of us were uh, looking at. But if you think about an organization which has the thousands of employees, and how do you say group your employees into who are the good performing ones, who needs additional trainings, who are into different um, uh, promotion cycles that will come in. So you can use data science to look into your employee base and see how you can segment them into various groups. So in our organizations, you can apply data science in all aspects of your organization, but you have to look into areas which are creating the most challenges today and see whether data science can solve some of those challenges. So you have to always look from a solutions aspect. I say no, 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 data science can no, 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 so, uh, you know, data science is a very big umbrella. There are, of course, a lot of subsets into it. So there's predictive analysis, descriptive, diagnostic, etc. These are just, you know, strategies that through which you can 
comb your data and the kind of insights that you want. But one of the most uh, well talked about in the recent terms that I really want to ask you about is artificial intelligence. Everybody is going AI, AI, AI. Kuch saalo pehle, I think it was VR, virtual reality. Now we've gotten bored of virtual reality. Now everybody is talking about artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is uh, a form of data science. And you know, me being a writer, people often ask me to compare my writing to chat GPT, you know. So I am also constantly under threat ki, kya main chat GPT se better lik sakti hu? <laughs> So, you know, with that in mind, I want to ask you that artificial intelligence is everywhere and I think it definitely gives you an edge in your startup if you stand up on a stage before an investor and say that, you know, we are using artificial intelligence to obtain certain results or optimize certain things in our company but startups are always bootstrapping a lot of them right and artificial intelligence i believe from a lay person's perspective requires substantial investment and effort so do you think do you honestly think that uh, something like this the hype in theory of artificial intelligence is something that can be put into practice for startups who don't have so much capital. Yes, yeah, so that's, uh, thanks, thanks for that and also bringing up the aspect of cost that comes into AI. So today, as we stand in 2024, uh, a lot of artificial intelligence has become productized. Like she, she gave the example of chat GPT or say any other tools. There are a range of tools which are already productizing the aspect of AI and providing that to your solution. So for a startup or any small business, because we also see this area around the Tri-City, a lot of small businesses are also booming in this area. They can be for manufacturing sector, financial sector, we talked about fund management in the in one of the previous sessions. Fund management is a lot of analytical thinking because you are looking at hundreds of, of stocks and where you can invest where you get the maximum return. You, that is based on historic performance and based on historic performance, what is the best bet that you can put on the future. So artificial intelligence can help in many of those. But I think what artificial intelligence really helps uh, is a lot of the unstructured data. And what is unstructured data particularly? We are talking of data which is either textual data, video data, or audio data. Usually these are very difficult to process. And say if you are a company and you have customer complaints, say you have say uh, 10,000 customer complaints, how do you go over this customer complaint and make sense of them? Either you spend maybe 10, 20 people sitting and reading through the complaints on a regular manner and responding to them, or you can use AI to say quickly analyze them and tell these are the five topics that people are talking about. So AI helps in many of those aspects. and. Um, we also, uh, I, I tend to do a lot of projects with the government and public sector. So recently Punjab has this uh, governance uh, grievances portal for citizens. So citizen grievances are being filed either in Punjabi or in English. So understanding those grievances, what those grievances are talking about was something that we uh, at ISB did for Punjab government using uh, artificial intelligence and text mining sort of resolution. You can see doing such sort of things are very helpful. I am talking in the government perspective, but for a company also to understand what are the challenges that your companies are facing, what are your customers talking about you, can you make sense of it and take action in real time and, and get back to them. I think for some of these things, artificial intelligence become very, very helpful as a tool. And you can start in by taking small steps. There are, uh, you can use open source tools like say, as Sonia was talking about, chat uh, or some of these tools to do some of the things, maybe using open source, and then say, maybe one year down the line, once you have more confidence on the tools, you want to have an internal uh, solution based on it, then you can in, uh, do that bigger uh, revenue spending and have a vendor or you have your in-house team, then develop the complete solution. But starting with the open source solution is often a good choice for many of these uh, other startups.
that's a great tip just going you know someone said before in a session that don't reinvent the wheel i think we have a lot of open solutions so let's just go for that as a starting point and and actually realize is it giving us any value is it solving our problem and if it is uh, then we can always you know like go deeper into it so thank you dr avik i want to uh, just give a few moments to everybody do you guys want to ask him any questions i think we are short on time but please we we uh, talk a lot about ai today but then hardly we see its application in the real manufacturing industry so are you giving some kind of a consultancy to uh, solve the sub use cases so i think that's a very good question but i think uh, like um, manufacturing industry i mean got the example of manufacturing industry like uh, ai is industry 4.0 so we have taken like steam engine electricity digitalization 4.0 so 4.0 if you have to apply you first need 3.0 if your machines in manufacturing are not digital and they are analog you if they are analog they are not generating data and writing data to a data database you cannot apply ai on them only when they are digital can you apply 4.0 because 3.0 ke baad hi 4.0 aayega if your machines are still run by me two months then you cannot bring in uh, even say uh, that automation of electricity has to be done first then digital has to be done then ai has to be done so i think uh, that's a big challenge if you consider uh, with compare with china china uh, i am not i don't know exactly about your machine but i'm talking in general mostly a lot of the manufacturing in india majority of them are still uh, analog based So analog based thing, they are not generating data. It will be doing its work. But that's a very simple thing. You sensorize it, you get yes. the data out of it. That's but but often converting analog into a. But often people are not ready to do that investment because they yeah, are. That's a very small investment. Yes, it is a small investment. You believe it's a small investment, but people don't believe that. It's a thousand rupees here per machine. That is what yes. we have done. See, we have about two thousand machines in our company. Yes. So almost sixty uh, percent are. that it is not a big huge cost at all my still point is that uh, so getting uh, the data uh, onto the computer machine by machine is there but then using the entire you know uh, uh, software layer so that we can have a production planning and controls we can have you know predictive and anal analytics there so that kind of a service is not available i have mean, no consultants who really come to and offer such services there My there are was, there are services like say you were talking about say predictive maintenance and and seeing the whole thing there are solutions of this nature but these are primarily by say ibm and saas so they are um, maybe sme it becomes too expensive for them to to procure maybe if say tata motors want to procure them it might be viable for them but for sme it can become challenging but if there are smaller players who are developing this solution because that will take a lot of this data and tell you in real time which of these machines are in say green red or yellow which needs servicing in the next 7 days which needs servicing in the next one month because that is the type of insights that you need really when when machines are running what sort of servicing what sort of load are there which is doing more overload on those things so some of these things are uh, can be done in house but we there are also smaller vendors who are providing them. so if it is such an expensive option mm -hmm. why a big buzz about it i mean it's useless for the common businesses see i think yes as we are also talking about say ai is getting democratized slowly and slowly so the democratization was so if you want to say use the chat gpt today or you have to build something of that nature it will be completely conversational for you the cost is quite high so big bigger companies are doing it but over time smaller players will start building that smaller smes smaller startups in this area will develop some solutions and once they build it the, because of competition the cost of such services will also come down and then it will become more viable for people but i think you can still um, adopt a lot of the open source solution that we have on this area and also smaller vendors are offering some of the solution but the big names who are offering i think they 
I don't know exactly about your company, but I'm again generalizing and, and excuse me for that. That the price ranges are bigger, and mostly uh, MNCs are in a are afford them. Because I have worked myself many years, and we have seen mostly the big big firms are are uh, putting their services. Does anybody else want to go? Okay, well, uh, I hope we've all learned something today. Thank you, Marshall. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.